church, you are so welcome. We're going to raise a hallelujah. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Occasionally we face hurdles, but we still raise a hallelujah in the middle of a mystery, in the middle of the storm. Yeah. Hallelujah In the presence of my enemy I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody Okay. 
for setting us free, for breaking every chain. We are prisoners of hope. We have the hope in you, Lord Jesus. Our hearts are grateful. Thank you because you are in our midst. You are Emmanuel and you are here. Thank you, Lord. Bless our hearts tonight. Bless the word. Before uh, service tonight, we were in the prayer room and the, the children evangelism group was praying and I thought of, of uh, an umbrella, an umbrella. And, and, um, and I look at the room here tonight and I think of a lot of little umbrellas. And um, it's coming from this book by Mark DeMoss that he tells a story about a missionary who talked about staying under the umbrella. So I, I'll read that to you in a minute, but before I do, um, I'm just thankful for how, how the Lord has helped us in life. And he has used many people on, in, in like high levels or low, or it's not a matter of high or low, but it's uh, Ephesians 4. Do you turn there with me? This is just to set the theme for our night, Ephesians 4, which is kind of short and sweet. Our Wednesday night is kind of just message, you know, offering, singing, fellowship. And so we have this verse. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm happy tonight. I really am. I am. I am. I'm trying to convince you. It's tough. Okay. No, I am. And uh, Pastor Roger Robbins returned from Europe. And he, his, he, he and Lizzie, they're an umbrella, you know. They're an umbrella for people in Europe, um, teachers like Don over here, um, John Sabo over here, and Pastor Barry Quirk, wow, what a team. And then the teenagers, Pastor Love and Pete Wistera and Kimmy Andrelonis and Paul and um, Meg and Ackerman. It's amazing how much work happens here on this campus. The nursery, then, the, you know, in the mother's room. Uh, every family is like an umbrella, kind of. Uh, we'll look at that. Look at chapter 4 and verse. Do uh, you want to turn to your neighbor and just say, you look like an umbrella to me right now. <laughs> yeah, you, you look like one. 
<laughs> You're growing into a huge umbrella. Beach umbrella. <laughs> okay, chapter 4, verse 16. This verse is kind of solid for us because we know it and think a lot about it. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. You know, in our affiliation of churches, it's, it's not a bureaucratic denomination, but it's a spiritual affiliation. And we are fitted together, and the Lord uh, puts us together in love, in love. And, and that's, that's the work of the Spirit. And I can see people living in that love and also serving um, God and serving each other with that love. And it's, it's, uh, it's really important to us because it says there that, uh, that um, we, are, we are speaking the truth in love, in verse 15, speaking the truth in love. You know what I love about uh, the body is when, when we had to make some hard decisions and just say the truth is so important to us and that we cannot compromise in our doctrine, we cannot compromise in our way of life and what we think and what we feel because we stand before God. And so the, this truth is, is so important in our hearts. And we, we, what, what the world says, we, you know, that's, that's the way it is in the world. But you are my disciples if you continue in my word. And uh, having a, a great diet in the word and to embrace it and to have it penetrate into our spirit, in our heart. And then when we speak it in love, so there is the two words, truth and then love, and may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Uh, so a family, a family is uh, challenged because there are so many lies, lies in the world and way of life that contradicts our way of life. Like um, not having sex before marriage. Like we don't believe in, in that. We, we believe that sex is for marriage. And our, our children know this because we go to the church and we have it in our hearts and we enjoy that truth. We enjoy it that that's important in our life. So, so a family is an umbrella for the, the children that grow up in it. And not just um, those things, but um, tenderness, kindness, uh, love, faith, forgiveness, peace in the home. We are, we are an umbrella so uh, for others. So when I heard them praying in the other room, you know, for these school opportunities and the parents and the children, it touches my heart to think that we touch children that are not in our church. They are out in the, the public square, so to speak. They're in the vicinities of those schools, and they come to learn. And then um, Harold and Cheryl just returned from Azerbaijan. And you can imagine the ministry that they had there how precious that must have been. And I, and I asked them to do the rap tonight over in the cafe, so if you want to hear more. Uh, Alan Cole, Jan, Jan's husband, is in Poland for two more weeks. And, uh, you know, I, I love to think that, that the Lord puts his hand on us and he 
he helps us and we learn how to live and we actually become a covering for others or an umbrella. So here's the story. Um, okay. Years ago in Hong Kong, a missionary named John had a genius for getting things done. In a densely populated and difficult city, that sort of thing draws attention. Particularly among American businesses, salivating over the lucrative Eastern market. One day the marketing executive of a squirt gun manufacturer took John to lunch and he offered him a salary of $200,000 a year with a nice office, a car, and a driver, if you will come and work for me. John declined the offer because he said, um, the exec pressed, how much are you making now? He said, $8,000. But that's not the point. I'm serving God, doing what I'm supposed to do and I've never been happier. That night at 11 o'clock, John's phone rang. It's all over Hong Kong. You rejected the offer. I'd like to know why. The caller refused to take tomorrow for an answer, and for 40 minutes later, in his pajamas, John was across a coffee table from him. Everyone at the American Chamber knows, the man said, I had to hear it for myself. Years later, recounting the episode, John tried to explain why the squirt gun bid and offers like it could never hook him. I call it staying under the umbrella. Step out from under it and you get wet. No amount of money or anything else was going to pull me from my purpose. John is past 80 now. Last year, he buried his wife. Behind him stretches a lifetime of serving people in Europe, Asia, Africa, and dozens of other places of which most Americans would mispronounce. Camps, orphanages, churches, and lives forever changed. Okay? It's a good story. Something to think about. Uh, I don't know what that means to you, uh, I don't know how you would understand that. Is it wrong to t- make money? No. Is it wrong to have another job? No. Could you have a better job? Yes. Could you, could you work for a company? Yes, you can. We, we, I don't think that's the point. The point that, well, is that that man had it in his heart to do what he was doing. And he couldn't afford to do two things. He had to do one or the other. I mean, he didn't have the time or the energy or the interest to do the two things, making the money and doing the business and being a missionary. And he chose that one. And uh, he called it, in that case, staying on the, under the umbrella. I think that, that when we belong to a local church where the Holy Spirit is helping us, I'm not saying that there is like huge miraculous things happening every day, no. But somebody cares about me. Somebody's speaking to my heart. Somebody's helping me in my faith. When I'm hurt, I have a family. I have somebody to pick me up and help me. I need it, spiritually. Not sentimentally or humanly, strictly speaking, but the Lord has given gifts to the body And these dear children in Baltimore City have an umbrella, our people that go there with the gospel, and our families, and our teenagers, and our school, and and each other, and our friends, they help us. And I just want to make that point. I want you to learn to say the phrase and think about it. This is very short, but I, I think you got the idea. That uh, find out where you should be, you are fitly framed together, fitly framed together, like fitted, you know, how, they, how those carpenters make the joints and they fit together, and we are fitted together 
in the body of Christ with each other in the Lord, and we do need it. Amen. Okay. Um, all right, you want to talk about it to your neighbor for a minute and just turn to your neighbor and just say, what did he say? Explain to me, just tell me, and what do you think about that? Okay, so how many of you remember Pastor Carl Silva? Yes, Pastor Carl, wow. Okay, so um, he and Susie did such a great work in India for many decades, a great work. And then his son, I remember Andrew like growing up as a little guy and his dad and mom really wanted him to come here to Bible school. And, uh, but they didn't pressure him. They just prayed for him and wear a covering, umbrella, beautiful umbrella like that that was a covering for him as he grew up with his mom and dad. It was so precious to see. And then um, and Pastor Carl went to be with the Lord. Wow. How many want to go? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's real for us going to heaven. It's real for us. And, um, but, uh, but Andrew is here in Bible school, a great blessing to the family, and a great blessing to us. And I'm just so uh, thankful for him being here and how much he receives and appreciates being here. It's so beautiful. I love you. Okay. Um, isn't it awesome to come here and just open our Bibles and just ask God to give us something? Yeah, okay. Um, would you open with me to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5? Just a small thought. And verse uh, 19. And this goes with what Pastor Shallow was talking about, about the umbrella. And when he says, stay under the umbrella, I think of like, find a place where you're content, right? And then, but then, like, that umbrella looks really nice over there, you know? And I want to go over there. But staying under the umbrella, finding contentment. And that's this verse. Verse 19. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the joy in his heart. What a beautiful verse, huh? And then I want to, I want to draw a parallel between this 
and discontentment, okay? So you, you can put your finger there. I'm going to put this little stylus here. And then we can go to Job chapter 20. And verse 20. And it says, Because he knew no contentment in his belly, he will not let anything in which he delights escape him. And therefore there was nothing left after he had eaten. In his prosper- therefore his prosperity will not endure. And in the fullness of his sufficiency, there will be distress. So here's a picture of a person who has no contentment in his belly. Right? He has little possessions that he has. He builds up walls around them. And he keeps them to, his, to himself. Right? There's no room for any addition, no room for any subtraction. It's just to himself. And after he, he eats from it, there's nothing left. It's all gone. Right? It's like the money that in Proverbs, that verse that you save up money and it grows wings and flies away. Right? In, therefore, his prosperity will not endure. And in the fullness of his sufficiency, he will always be in distress. Can you, can you imagine that? Think of people in the world right now, how discontent, right? They store up and store up and store up, but, but they're never content, right? Security and significance, the things we long for as human beings, cannot be found by material things, right? It cannot be satisfied. We have, this, we have eternity in our hearts. And, 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 then, and then this verse in Ecclesiastes 5, right? To everyone whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them. Let's just stop there. That's grace, right? To everyone, everyone to whom God has given wealth and possessions, and we have the power to enjoy them, right? Accept his lot. Let us accept his lot. And then secondly is rejoice in his toil. And this is a gift from God. This makes me think that contentment is more an attitude of the heart, right? It's not, it's not so much. It's just like a shift in our perspective, we stop looking at what around us. We stop looking down at our feet and we look up and we see all the blessings that God has for us. And we see that we are so blessed. Right? Paul in Philippians 4, what does he say? He says, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Right? Right? I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. He's writing this from his prison cell. Damp, closed, chained, chained feet. Right? This is what he says. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In and in every, in any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And this is what he says: I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have we ever read that verse? Have you read it in context? It's 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 with contentment. He knows how to be content because. Because he can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have you ever been in a place where it's just like, come on, God, come on, right? That is, that is a gift from God. It's his lot. We can, we can accept it and find joy in it. And this is what Ecclesiastes says. You will not so much remember the days of this life because God will keep you occupied with a joy in your heart. You know, I think of this, this song, It Is Well With My Soul. How many, how many of you know the story behind that? Yeah. This person, right, he had five kids, and one of them died to pneumonia. So he sends his wife and his four kids on a little vacation. He was going to join them. And he, um, on the way, their ship uh, crashes into another ship and gets shipwrecked. And four of the kids die, and only the wife survives, right? So she reaches this place. She sends him a telegram, and then she says, saved alone, what, what should I do? Imagine receiving a telegram. Huh? And then he, and then he, goes, he goes on the first ship he can find. And as, he, as his boat is crossing that same place where, the, where his four daughters died, the captain calls him and says, this is the place. And that's when he writes the song. Right? What, do, do you know what the song is? When, when peace like a river, right, attended way. My, yeah, when sorrows like seas billows roar, whatever my lot, right? Thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. He accepts it. He rejoices in it. And then God does the rest. God does. God. God keeps him occupied with the joy in his heart. And that's that's how we live this life, really, right? We can we can search. We can seek for contentment in many places. But, but what about what about when you're 
when God gives you something, maybe you're on the mission field somewhere and you're discouraged and like, oh, what do I do? Like, can I find contentment there? Right? Accept it, rejoice in it, and God will keep you occupied with the joy in your heart. The last verse in closing, Psalm 16, verse 5. I think, of, I think of when the Israelites were given the land, right? Every tribe got a, got a portion of land. But it said to the, about the Levites, the Levites will have no portion in the land for the Lord is their inheritance. And I think of us as like sojourners in this land. We have no inheritance really. We really don't have any, much to our names. We're all just, right? We have what we have. And then look at this verse, Psalm 16 verse 5. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. He holds my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. That's what we have, right? This is, a, this is the secret to contentment, is that we have the abiding presence of the Lord in us. That's it. That's it. We can overcome. We can say, whatever my lot, Lord, you've taught me to say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I lack nothing. I know what it is to abound. I know what it is to be brought low, right? But the Lord is my portion, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, and we have a beautiful inheritance. Yeah, amen. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Amen. Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything, a time for weeping, a time for mourning, a time for laughing, a time for crying, and a time to change your clocks back an hour on Saturday. Okay, or you're going to come to service and it's not going to be for another hour. So <clears throat> not as bad as the spring version where you go forward and you lose an hour. So we gain an hour on Saturday. That's, that's my announcement. Do we have any first-time visitors for the first time? We just want to recognize you. Just say hi. Right in the back here. Thank you so much. We have ushers that, that have a welcome packet for you. Um, did I miss anybody? Just want to briefly raise your hand and say hi and welcome. Okay. Um, we also have the Wings of Glory. So I wanted to just let you know that you can get the Wings of Glory Winter Edition in the Welcome Center after service. Um, this is a great way for the mission department to show what's going on around the world in our ministry. So please, if you can, get a chance, just pick this up. It'll be in the Welcome Center. And um, we're going to pray for the offering. The Grace Hour, I don't have an envelope, but the Grace Hour envelopes, you should have one if someone wants to hold it up. The Grace Hour tonight, Wednesday night, Grace Hour. Um, a beautiful um, way to give on Wednesday nights to the Grace Hour. So. You can go to ggwo.org slash donate as well. Thank you, Father, for that incredible word from Andrew, Lord. Thank you for being content. Lord, you give us that contentment, Lord. We can't find it in this world. We can't find it in ourselves. But you, you give it to us as a gift of grace, Lord. And even when it can hurt to give, even when it can hurt to let things go, you give us that contentment that we can do that because ultimately you are our lot. You hold our lot, Lord. You have it in your hands and you give it and you take it away and it's all yours. And if we can just help us to recognize that, help us to understand that truth that everything in this world, including ourselves, is yours, Lord, and we give it, um, but we don't give it, actually. You're the one that gives it. Help us to um, hear tonight. Help us to receive tonight. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for um, your grace. Thank you for just rest, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Just take a few minutes and just uh, have a, a word of love, word of encouragement to your neighbor, and just uh, build them up, know their name, love them, encourage them. Somebody you know you don't know, would you do that now for a few moments? Thank you, Andrew. What a good word. That was beautiful. And the song, wow. We had to listen to that all night, huh? Uh, Pastor Barry, you want to walk down here for a minute? Um, Coach Lynch, do you want to come down here? Come on. All right. Do we have the microphone? And and Don, do you want to do this? Do you want to, Don? Do you want to say something? Come on. Yeah. So maybe just a thought about being under the umbrella. And uh, I had the privilege today, that I was on a conference call with one of our branch ministries with some ladies who were just really praying and thinking about starting a school. And they asked a lot of questions, but it, it, as I answered the questions, I kept realizing how much um, we have in our covering here and that you know, really, we don't have this independent vision, but we are an extension of the vision of the church and that, you know, our clientele, many of many of our parents are from the church and that they are like minded. And as I'm speaking to them, I'm realizing how much life there is and joy there is to to operate in that way in the umbrella. And then we get to do it shoulder to shoulder. 
with people who we've grown up in the ministry with in many cases. Pat and I, I was telling him the other day when we were at a soccer game, breaking up World War III between some parents. <laughs> and the funny thing is, we were, we were literally the ones that were calming this situation down. And later I texted him and said, would you ever imagine playing wiffle ball in Morgan Manor apartments that we would be those guys? <laughs> But that's what God does in the umbrella, and we're just really thankful for that. I get to work with people who are like-minded and have this ministry in their hearts, and it's such an edifying privilege, with, and really all our team members. That when, when Pastor Schauer says, Pastor Barry in the school, I'm like, oh, that, like I'm one little piece of it. There's so many awesome people like these guys. So, Yeah, I would, I would just uh, was thinking with the umbrella and just... Just the opportunity to uh, work with the young kids and, and to work with this young principal over here is uh, <laughs> it's just awesome that the covering and, and the covering of the body and what it does, it gives you confidence and our confidence is in, in Christ. But it's amazing uh, to see what God can do um, when everything's in the right place. And uh, we, you know, we finish one season and we're into the next. We start basketball and it's it's like building that foundation, and if, and if everything's right in the foundation, everything's okay. Everything's okay. So, uh, great word from Andrew, who, hey, gym teacher, preacher, and one heck of a coach, the middle school soccer championship coach over there. Just a little shout out to Coach Andrew. But I just, uh, it's just a blessing uh, to work in this ministry and and just that confidence that we can have um, is amazing. And what we're doing is we're seeing young people uh, also have that same kind of integrity and, and confidence uh, in the right place. So it's, it's amazing, and it's just a, it's an honor to be part of this, this team. Yeah, I was just thinking about the covering of just the faithfulness of God, that he is so faithful to his word. And um, the world has, you know, so many voices coming, especially at our young people. But the word stands so strong against it because it doesn't fail. And um, it's just amazing to be in a place where um, we can build each other up in truth every day. And... Um, this is just a precious place to just abide. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, it's just thankful for that so much. Wow. Wow, great. So let's just thank God tonight. And just say this prayer. Lord, you have been so good to us to cover us and care for us, carry us, provide for us, forgive us, anoint us, Satisfy us, satisfy our hearts to be contented in our hearts, Lord, to guide us with your eye, to correct us when we fail, when we fall again and again, and, and though we fall, we will not be utterly cast down, we will not be forsaken, but underneath are your everlasting arms. You will speak to us, Lord, like you did Job. You will, you will. You will carry us and finish the work you started in us. We have many loved ones, Lord. Many, many of us, we have loved ones in our lives and some, uh, some people that we know haven't found you, and we ask you, Jesus, to 
wake us up, stir our hearts, answer our prayers, lead us. We pray. <coughs> Jesus, for our country, Lord, we pray for our country, that we could be an umbrella for our country in some way, that we would pray for our leaders, that you would remove a king or a leader like his heart or turn his heart because his heart is in your hand. Like a Hesiurus in the Bible, he couldn't sleep one night and he just wanted to hear the history read and they read it and he woke up and what have we done anything for Monte Kai? And the story goes on. Lord Jesus, we pray. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, do you remember the story of the prodigal son and when he went away and then what came to his mind? Uh, he said, my father has employees people. I could go work for him. He didn't think of it as a covering or an umbrella, but it was when he returned. And the house was, they turned it up. They, they had merriment and feasting. And then I, I read to the high school this morning, Proverbs 7. I want you to turn there. This should just be a five minutes, maybe just a short word. But this is Proverbs 7 about the young man. There was a man in the window looking out on the street. And, and he saw something. Chapter 7, verse 6. Right at the window of my house, I look through my casement. Uh, so he is like a observer up in the window looking out, and he sees a young man in the street, and he sees a woman. And he said, I beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths, a young man void of understanding. Passing through the street near her corner, and the, he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she, now is she without, now in the streets, and lies in wait at every corner. So she caught him, kissed him, with an impudent face said unto him, And I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet you. Meet you? I came out to meet you, diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I've decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He's gone a long journey. He's taken a bag of money <clears throat> with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. So there is a young man with no, like he, he's a, he, he doesn't have the ability there. He has, but he doesn't, it's not, he's not, uh, cultivated uh, resistance. He doesn't understand what is happening. He hasn't uh, been warned or doesn't know what this is about. It's so clear. Here, here's a little picture here. Um, we have time. And he, he has a short block of time. 
he doesn't understand where it's going. This is um, the problem with all of us. Like staying under the umbrella, it, one of the elements of it is the maturing of my heart and of my mind, the cultivation of thought, of words, of warnings, of wisdom, of guidance, the cultivation of resistance to say no, no, or to run, go away from it, or not be alone on the street, or any number of things can be said about it, or to recognize flags, red flags go up, like flags go up, but who, where is my father who could instruct me? Where, where is my mother? Where is my sister? Where are my friends? Where, where, can, where do I get what I need in order to realize that this thing is a party? It lasts a couple of hours, and it's over. So, so how do I handle it? And this is a, this is a very big deal because... Uh, uh, it's, it's a big deal. It's tragic. Okay, let's finish up here. He says, uh, verse 21, with her f much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goes after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strikes through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare and knows not that it is his for his life. Uh, may, maybe um, d um, Terry Shishmanian, I think, is that you back there, Terry? Over there, Over there okay. The, the party for Shawnee Ryan, the party. Do you mind if I say that I mean Shawnee? Why, it's a great, great story. Wasn't his 30th year at birthday party? 30th birthday party, around his family, the church people. He's had challenges in his life with alcohol and um, other and various things that happen. It happens. His marriage was was very much jeopardized. But in his birthday party, he said, "What did he say?" It's better than mom would say. Oh, I mean, Kathy. Well, age, this age thing. You're the, the same person, I confuse you. What did he say? Do you want to use that? We love you. We love you. Oh, yeah, was it her Ter house? Terry would it? probably say it better. Okay. Um, what he said is if it hadn't been for the body, his friends, uh, people that stood by him, uh, through it was eight years. He hadn't been sober for eight years, and um, he almost lost his life in Tennessee when he was there because he said it. I came out from under a covering, and um, you know God was very faithful. A lot of prayers, but like Pete was Stara, uh, Pastor Love, uh, Pastor Shabelli, Pastor Schaller, uh, Charlie Wire, Pastor James. Pastor Ramir, I mean, people just continually, Pastor Eugene, coming alongside him and coming alongside him, and he said that it was the body of Christ that, that didn't, like, give up on him, and that he made the decisions he made, and they were the wrong ones, and he did, he had no covering, but God, you know, answered prayer, and it was, like, an amazing time. He's been sober for one year, and uh, his family is reconciled, and, and um, they're doing great, but... It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, if it wasn't for my family, right? My family, the church, yeah? friends. Wow, beautiful. Scotty Dubay, Tech Ops. Beautiful. What a good, good, good story. Thank you, Jesus, for that story. Wow. That's amazing. So, that's all. Yeah. Lord Jesus, thank you for that story, this family you've given us, this reality 
this Holy Spirit that is in each of us, and to walk in the Spirit. We, we know if we were to walk in the flesh, this would not be happening. But we are learning and growing and walking in the Spirit, loving each other and lighthearted and thankful. And, and this young man has a life. Thank you, God, for all of the grace that has been shown to us through the years your grace given to us, and then we give it to each other. We give grace to each other. We love each other. Thank you, Lord. And then anyone here, you you don't have Jesus in your life yet, then just open your heart to Jesus. He'll come into your heart, walk by faith in him. He will help you. He will govern you. He will fill you with the Spirit. and, And he will show you the umbrella. He will show it to you. You'll find a new group of friends, like new people, the gifts of the Spirit, new, new way of life that you find in him. And, and uh, that's between you and God, but it happens. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Let's stand up and do our closing song.
your family, your children, your children, your children. May His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. I, I, want, I got one more thing. Just in the singing, I remember it meant a lot to me and my wife when we were living in Hungary. And she, she and I decided that, that I would continue living in Hungary and she would come back here and raise the family. And what an unusual arrangement that was. But she was okay with that. She encouraged me, said, we don't know how it'll work. Maybe God is in it. Let's try it. And then Dr. Stevens, I talked to him about it. So he's like, my covering. And he said, yeah, do you have peace about it? I go, yeah, I think so. Let's see how it goes. And then we, we did that for uh, 12 years. And... Uh, and, and, and um, I just remember there were people that totally disagreed with it. There were people that, that said, you know, things about it, gave their opinion and, and so on and how wrong it was. But my, my, my wife and I didn't feel like that and Pastor Stevens didn't either. And I kind of appreciated the fact that even though one way you could say, you know, it's not a good thing. But on the other hand, like I needed, I needed somebody to kind of say, wait, well, is this okay? And he did that, you know, with the body here and the, the church. So there are things in your life, maybe sometimes we should obey our wives. That's a good point. <laughs> like we should obey our wives. And they might have God's mind. What do you think, guys? Maybe there's a <laughs> slim possibility. No, there might be, and on the other hand, the wife, like, submitted to the husband, and then also uh, we have the pastor and pastors and counselors, and we have each other. So uh, I like it that I'm not alone, Amen. that I'm just not unilaterally making decisions, but I would like, I would like the Holy Spirit to lead me. I want the Word of God to speak to my heart. And I'd like to have spiritual people around me. And maybe we'll make it to the end with joy and say, how did God do that? And look at our, in our case, like all of our family members and all of us, we all live within like five miles of each other. And we never planned it. I mean, we couldn't have done that. You know how it is. Like, I just say, that's the Lord. The Lord did that. Thank you. And maybe your situation is different. We all of our situations are different, but the point, point is that God is for you. God is for you. He is. We sang it. Isn't that good? The Lord dismiss us and puts the rap and um, dismiss us and lead us. We heard something tonight 
that we can take home and have it in our hearts and walk by faith in you. You made a place for us. You made a place for us, and we thank you for that. In Christ's name, amen. You're dismissed.